have a confession to make. I hate chimps. I love animals, all animals. I'm Aussie after all. I love dogs, cats, snakes, toads, sharks, crocodiles, fucking blobfish. Whatever they are, I love them and I cherish them deeply. Except for fucking chimps. I don't like chimps. Chimps are like the worst of humans squished into a four-foot frame and given super strength. Which is probably why Jordan Peele's latest offering, Nope, stuck with me far longer than it did most. Nope isn't even really about chimps. It's about a family of African-American ranchers who train horses for movies and their encounters with a UFO. But there's a horrifying little chimp named Gordy in it and the scenes with him are burned into my brain like the image of Jesus on some toast in Mexico. Um, it is... God, the chimps, the worst. Um, nope follows the famous Haywood family. They are descendants of the first person on film, a jockey, in the short Animal Locomotion. After a tragic family death and a drop in business, OJ, who's played by Daniel Kalur, and M, played by the always effervescent Kiki Palmer, have to sell some of their horses to the Western Tourist Trap that's opened just down the road, run by child actor Jupe, played flawlessly by Stephen Ewan. Um, OJ notices, however, that the horses on his ranch have become the fascination of a UFO, and like any good horror movie protagonist, he decides to investigate. <sighs> Like everything Jordan Peele does, this movie is so fucking clever. Um, it's clever without being condescending, and I think that's because Jordan comes from a comedy background. Some movies are written for critics to jerk off over. Nope isn't, right? It, it seems like it's going to be quite highbrow, given the level of cinematography and stuff. But I found it super inclusive. He knows what we want. We want big, spooky UFO shots, and Nope delivers them. Like, praise be to E.T. because he, he nails the UFO shots in this. It's very, like, close encounters of the third kind. He also manages to make wacky, waving, inflatable arm men a big part of this movie, which I love it when random little items, like, have a huge part in the movie. Fucking awesome. Well done. Um, this movie, in a nutshell, is basically about animal and crew exploitation in Hollywood. Which I think is a huge topic, because like, if given the the recent strikes, and you know anyone who's run any event knows, if you treat your staff with respect, shit usually goes well, right? Um, but if you act like a tyrant, you know, if you act like Kim Jong Un on set, you're usually fucked. The events are usually bad. Um, that's this movie's vibe, right? It's all about that sort of stuff. The themes in it are all about that sort of stuff. Um, the acting is fantastic in this. Cal Ewer plays OJ like a dude who prefers animals to people, which makes sense. He's a fucking rancher. Why wouldn't he? Um, and Kiki, <laughs> on the opposite end of the spectrum, plays M like a person who needs to be talking to someone at all time or she blows up like the bus in speed. Um, I love that family dynamic. One really extroverted, one super introverted. I think it's great. Even if I wanted to fucking grab Emmett points and shake her, you're, you're ruining this business. Um, but it's all part of the story, right? Um, Stephen Ewan is phenomenal as Jupe, the child actor. He, he's desperate for continued fame. Um, and I think the scariest bits in this are, in fact, his flashback scenes. They are, frankly, they're my fucking worst nightmare. They're so, they're so bad. They, they freaked me out. Um, if you, I'm surprised no one has done a movie based around the same themes as his flashbacks, because it would be terrific. Um, a big takeaway from this movie is that Jordan Peele loves movies. You could watch this a hundred times and not pick up on all the little references. The references are on masks, they're on jackets, they're on storefronts. Specifically, Stephen Ewan's jacket in this is awesome, his red jacket. Um, you name it, it's referenced. Even movies that I loved, that I thought people hated, are referenced in this. Like, I'm a... I'm a Scorpion King lover. Woot woot! Um, and it's even referenced in this movie, which I, di I didn't have that on my bingo card. And you can just tell he adore, like he loves Jaws. He fucking loves Jaws. He, there is a lot of nods to Jaws in this, which is great because I think they're the sort of horror films that he grew up on. Um, one major con in this is the movie is too long. I think they could have shortened it. It doesn't kick off fully until about halfway through and 
it's a two and a half hour runtime. So it is asking a lot for most audiences. Um, that being said, for me, they built the mystery well, so I knew I was in. As soon as they started building the mystery, I was like, okay, I'm going to stick around. So be warned going in, it does, the second half is way stronger than the first. Another flaw I could see is that at some points, the sitcom subplot, it can feel disjointed. And after walking away and thinking about it overnight, I, I did get it. I understood why it was in there. But straight after the credits rolled, I did think like, what the fuck's the deal with the chimp? So I think lots of people will have that. Um, but there, there is so much in this movie. There is so much in this movie. And I, you could, I think it probably will. I think it'll spawn a whole curriculum for some film school out there. Um, bottom line, Jordan Peele is an amazing filmmaker and I love that he just keeps making original content. He doesn't go in for sequels. He doesn't do any of that shit. And I think that's great. Also, the sound in this movie... Fantastic through headphones. It would have been amazing in IMAX. I wish I, I wish I'd seen it in IMAX. That was dumb of me. As far as like his his filmography, I go Get Out highest, Nope just below it, and then Us a bit further down. So if you're feeling the same way, if you felt the same way about Us, this this will probably be better than that for you. Um, I recommend watching this if you love alien movies and documentaries. Spark up and chill out, dude. This is for you. All my Roganites, this is for you. Um, if you need ammo on why not to get a chimp as a pet, Gordy should be the fucking poster boy for that campaign. Um, if you love wacky, waving, inflatable arm men, I'm hoping, I'm hoping they get nominated for supporting actor for the Oscar. Um, or you love Jordan Peele's sense of humor. The monster name in this is just so typically Jordan Peele. Well, cinematography, as I said before, is fantastic in this. He managed to get Nolan's cinematographer, Hoyt Van Hoytenma. Yes. That's his real name. I googled it to make sure. Um, so if you like Nolan cinematography, there's a lot to like here. I don't recommend watching this if you hate slow burns or you don't like character pieces. This relies on a lot of that, even though there are some really great, gory and spooky UFO bits. It's mostly a character sh piece. The cinematography in this movie might be the best I've seen in any horror movie. Um, I think it is. I think it is the best I've seen in any horror movie. Maybe Midsommar comes close it it also it adds things to alien law that i've never seen before i love it when a movie takes an existing law and then builds on it which this does i don't think it's the best of peel's catalog i think get out still is the king for me but it is really good um and if you have patience it will reward you with every viewing i imagine there's already like six million law videos on youtube that talk about every facet of this movie so you know, if you did watch this and, and wanted more, you, I am guarantee you'd be able to find something out there. Um, but I, I really liked it. As always, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow for another review. Peace.